First of all, I want to draw out for you the mother. Mothers are beautiful. They are really beautiful. For one real reason. They cry for anything. Any reason, they cry, man. You could find a piece of wood in the gutter. A piece of old red, raggedy wood. Just a piece of wood. And taken... You don't even have to wipe it off. Just take your little pen knife and put a nick in it. And just carry it on home to her. And say, look, Mom, see what I made for you? Your mother will say, oh, my goodness. You made this for me. You just come here. I'll forgive you for everything. See, that's where mothers have it over fathers, man. Because you take that same piece of wood. Give it to your father. Dad, I made this for you. What the hell is this, a piece of wood you found in the gutter? Get that thing out of here. <laughs> That's why fathers don't get good presents, because they don't cry. <laughs> huh? Father's Day comes, right? What happens? Every father's got to tell everybody. You know, today is Father's Day for crying out loud. Mother's Day, you break your back, man, buying, you know, working to buy some presents. Father's Day, you go up to your father. Dad, give me 35 cents. I want to buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> And then you smoke half the pack coming home. And that isn't even his brand. All fathers fall asleep watching the television set. Haven't met one yet that didn't fall asleep with one shoe off, propped up on the sofa, and just snort. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you come in the house and the television set's going... Turn it off, Click. Turn it back on. I was looking at that. Dad, what are you talking about? It was Conrad. Leave him on. He's a hell of a detective. A mother's greatest weapon, though, is not crying. A mother's greatest weapon is her voice. Did I tell you that? If that voice was, is within 30 feet of you, it will decalcify your whole spinal column and you will drop to your knees. And say, please, Mother, I'd rather you hit me than scream at me. Mothers always say, you're going to drive me to my grave. Fathers always say, I'm going to drive you to your grave. And the father's sound is different, too, although it is a great weapon for him. Father's voice is, oh. I remember the three of us as kids used to sit down and watch television, man. He'd just walk into the living room, 5'11", 230 pounds. Oh. Okay, man, everybody spread out. He's going to hit somebody. <laughs> no sense in letting him get all three of us in one shot. Everybody spread out. Let's go, let's go. And he would always chase one kid. Come back here, come back here, which is a dumb statement to make. What does a parent really think? You think because you say, come back here, the kid's going to stop and come back and get killed? Everybody's not dumb. I've seen some dumb parents in my life, man. Dumb because they said to some kid, go get me something to beat you with. <laughs> now, what kind of a statement is that to make? And I've seen kids dumb enough to go out and rip up a tree and bring it back here. Go on, beat me to death, Dad. My father ever said that to me, I'd tear off the corner of a piece of paper. Here, I go on, well. Go on, tear me up, tear me up. And a parent, the father or mother is never wrong, man. <laughs> they don't know your name, some of them. If there's over three children, they, they can't go, Oh, brash, bo boy, stop that. They don't know you and walk up and hit you for nothing. Whack, what's that for? That's because the, the other time when I didn't catch you when you was doing something. And don't you ever forget it. Parents, really grew.